Well, do you have like a theory of um, what do you think about like speculating as to what things would be like without a state? Uh, there's lots of possibilities, um, but the the first thing that springs to my mind, and then, um, I don't know, have you ever heard of a, a podcast called um, The Bad Quaker? The name is Ben Stone. Yes, it's a uh, really interesting you, podcast. You, you, you mentioned that to me when you when you uh, uh, started posting on here, and and I, I went oh, okay. and listened to a few of them after that. He has an, he has a really interesting thing he says, and um, I, I kind of like it because it it defers all the questions about how will things work. Because what he says is, um, all right, like take slavery for instance, right? Um, at some point, people said we shouldn't have slaves because it's, it violates the rights of other people. And then you know, one response would be, yes, you're right, that violates, the re that violates the rights of other people, so let's figure out whatever we need to do to make it not happen. Um, but on the other hand, someone could say, well, if we don't have slaves, how would the cotton ever get picked? And how <laughs> would you know, the chores ever be done? So I think the people who say, how would X work under anarchy mm -hmm. um, aren't really getting the point. The point is it's an immoral system. So it doesn't matter what the alternative is. The first thing you have to recognize is that the system that you are currently working under is immoral. So you can't continue in that and continue to think that you're a moral person. I don't know. That's just the way I look at it. Yeah, that's so then that's true, but then, yeah, then the question becomes well, they're really good at rationalizing um away that fact. The, the fact that it that that uh go, government is is necessarily evil. They don't see, nobody seems to really mind th that. And and a, a lot of people don't want to admit it. And the 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 problem I see with just leaving it at that, just saying, well, it, it really doesn't matter um, how uh, life would be without government. Um, government's bad, so we need to get rid of it. Could lead to a response that says, well, it, it just, it's impossible to live without a government. And therefore, yes, it's evil, even if you get them to admit that. Um, but it's necessary. So it's a necessary evil. So I, f I find it necessary right. to, to think of ways to, to, um, to talk about what, how things, how functions that the government serves could be served without it. And um, yeah, some people I, don't I, like that. I they, agree with they, you. Some people think that um, speculating about that stuff it, uh, kind of flies in the face of, well, these are mostly, I guess, Austrian economists who, who say, well, you can't really predict in principle what the market's going to do. Um, and so trying to predict what entrepreneurs, free acting entrepreneurs would, would do in, in some, some situation is uh, it, it, contradicting something else you believe. And to that I say, well, I'm not trying to tell you how it would work. I'm just offering possible scenarios. You know, these are possibilities. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to point out the fact that stuff still can work. We can still have uh, justice. We can still have roads. We can still have defense. And these are just possible models. I'm not saying I know how it would work out. I'm just saying um, <laughs> that that it's possible. And I, and the, the the model I offer is just an il illustration that it's possible. And like when I point out the um, the stories uh, of Ireland and and Iceland and um, and the pre-statized Western United States, um, those are just Example model, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. And to get people, I I, I do agree with you that um, you can make the ethical argument that says, okay, what we're doing right now is wrong. And then, yes, I agree with you that you then need to say, okay, well, then here are some possibilities. It is possible, right? Like you said, one very interesting book I read a while ago was called. Um, there's a market for liberty. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that. It's by um, a, a married couple called, uh, their name is uh, Linda and Morris Tannehill. Tannehill, yeah, that's it. I think I downloaded that from Mises. 
and listen to it on audio. Okay. And it, it kind of goes through step by step of, okay, what, what are the services that need to be provided? Essentially, defense, dispute resolution. I mean, that's, that's really it. Defense, de defense, dispute resolution, and then um, aggression prevention, which essentially like criminal justice. And they okay. walk through a series of scenarios of how that could possibly work. And defense would defense and, and dispute resolution would essentially be performed by insurance agencies, or protection agencies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of people models seem to include that. Go ahead. Because uh, it's saying I a lot of people from models include insurance. Are you familiar with Rothbard's? Um, for a new liberty? Um, he, I can't remember how familiar I am with it. Uh, nah, uh, it's a it, book, It doesn't right? matter. It's a, um, yes, it's, a book. It's, a short, it's a very short book, maybe even pamphlet-sized, and it, it's along the lines of A Market for Liberty. It's, it's sort of the same thing. How, how could a society exist? And again, he, he points to security agencies that would sort of be bundled up with insurance. I mean, their whole job is to protect people, which is what insurance companies do, essentially. Um, okay. And they would be for, you know, for profit, and you would shop around for your protection agency, and they would protect you based upon you know, whatever risk factors are involved in you as an individual. So it's the same sort of idea. Now, the, the, uh, the, the older systems, the, the Irish and, and Icelandic systems, they, of course, as far as we can tell, they didn't have any setup that involved um, insurance companies. I guess in, the, in some sense it was, like if you were a member of a chieftain or yeah. a, a Twatha, you had, you paid dues, so that's, I guess, your policy premium. Um, in right, a sense. and wasn't but there it, something to do with the, um, with the Irish system where people would vouch for you? And 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 they would, um, you know, you would you would become of a was a Tuatha? Is that what it was called? Um, uh, the Tuatha sort of was the, the, the Tuatha. yeah, that's that's the clan, that's the organization, right. the uh, the larger organization. But the the judges weren't part of those. Um, they were different. They were just uh, right. guys who uh, had a reputation for knowing common law and rendering. Um, fair uh, decisions based on their proper knowledge of common law, and that's all it was. That's all you needed Correct. to be uh, 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 what you call it, Breon. Right, but there that's, was a, that's um, that makes sense. It, it was a concept it, in the tool. Oh, it, it makes sense to have the uh, the judges separate from the from the uh, from everything else. They're kind of the ones. They're the arbitrators, oh, and and it's nice. It's nice not to have them involved, you know, it, it being having having any any uh, it, it, I guess conflict. what do you call it? Yeah, any, any conflict possible interest. conflict. Yeah, yeah. But there was, but there was um, also I, if, and I haven't read Rothbard's thing on Ireland in a while. Um, but there was a concept that um, you would be th this concept of surety, where um, you would be backed up by the people in your Tuatha. So if you committed some sort of infraction, they, uh -huh. as, an, as an entire group, would, would bear responsibility. Sort of like an insurance agency. So their goal was to keep you in line, essentially to keep you in line so that you wouldn't go out wreaking havoc, and then they would be on the hook for compensating the victim from the other Tuatha. So it was sort of okay. a self-regulating system. I mean, it's not as explicit as an insurance agency, but there was the idea that it was a mutual never, um, risk. Okay. I, I never picked up, up on that. I kind of swear I... Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know, I, I but... I read that. Well, that makes sense. That would be kind of uh, similar to other people's idea that I've heard more recently of have the insurance company protecting... Um, society, insuring society against uh, uh, damages incurred by, by the individual. And that's, I guess, what that 
if that is how it worked, which it doesn't really matter if it is in fact how it worked or not. It's, it, could, it could possibly have the work that way, and it could possibly work that way in the future. Right. There's, there's no reason why um, every single individual needs to be held responsible. And that's the whole idea of the insurance or um, security agency is, is that you are part of a group, a voluntary group, but you're still part of a group, and that group negotiates with a whole bunch of other groups. I think the thing with anarchy um, that people mistake is that they think anarchy means absolutely no organization. And yes, I really think what it would, what we want to get to is the point where, yeah, we have organization and we have organizations with law and we have organizations that impose a structure, but your membership in that organization is a voluntary membership. And when you join that organization, you then subscribe to their rules and, and then them, they as sort of a quote unquote state will negotiate with other quote unquote states when there are any sort of interstate conflicts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I, I really have no idea why people think it's so complicated to tell you the truth. You know, I, I at first had no inkling and before I heard I any of the uh, ideas of possible scenarios of the, of these service, services being provided. Uh, without a government. It was just kind of a blank in my mind, I guess. Um, but once people started talking about it, I, I realized, oh, man, you're right. You could just imagine all kinds of ways to do this uh, without, without government, without force, without violence. And, and, and then um, I only recently discovered um, Lysander Spooner and his, his work. And yeah, that essay he made read was amazing. That's what I thought. That that thing blew yeah. me away. The, he makes the, a, the an, um, of justice. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yes. Yes. He makes an amazing ethical case against government. And then there's another one I found recently that's called um, Vi uh, "Vices Are Not Crimes," and it's it, it seems to be in a different mood. It's it's kind of funny. He he. Uh, if you're a Catholic, you might not like to read it because he, he lays into the Pope a little bit. He's not real mean about it. It's just he kind of makes fun of him. Um, I don't know if you've read that, but if you haven't, you, you might want to. It's, it's a, oh, it, it's, I haven't, but I just it's, pulled it up on my computer right it's entertaining. now. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he, he's an amazing, he's an amazing thinker. And when you, when you read that, um, yeah. What was it called? The science of liberty or the science of ethics? Um, yeah, the science of I was justice. Riding around in my car with my kid. Yeah, I was riding around listening to that, and I was just blown away by the clarity of um, the argument. Yeah, he, yeah, he was he was something else. I, I think one thing when when we de we deal with people and you're presenting the idea of anarchy. First of all, uh, the, the name anarchy is just. It's a knee jerk. People are going to freak out. So yeah. I try to avoid that term yes, as much is. as I can. Yeah. Um, I need to start avoiding but, it. Yeah, that's why I, I like the term voluntarism. But I don't know if you noticed, um, I had an interaction with, yeah, what was his name? Mantra. Ma on, um, yeah. on, the, on the board. Yeah, you, and he uh -huh. sort of said something like, what are you going to use, vol volunteers? So it, it's, it's an awkward that also is an awkward name. Right. You know, I had the feeling that he was actually, uh, that he already knows the answers to those questions, and he was just uh, uh, goading you to, to try to get you to actually write, spell the answers out. Um, I don't know. I may be wrong about that, but that's kind of a feeling I was getting with him um, when he was doing that. You, you may be right there. Um, what I thought of fairly recently was the, the notion that I don't want to say anarchy as as in no government, but I want to say anarchy or voluntarism or something. I don't know what the name is, but it's voluntary government. So there is a government. The only thing different about it. So just, so just think of every single thing the government does. The only difference is it doesn't automatically claim you as a citizen just because you live in its territory. You have to sign up for it. And does it have borders? Like tweet. I, I don't think it does. I think okay. it, would, it, would have, it would have clients. 
like any other okay. business. They would have clients who are distributed, and, and maybe they would all be in a particular area. I'm not sure. Have you ever read a book called The Diamond Age? Or No. What's his name? No. i got to Google it. Um, he has the Diamond Age. Of, um, I, that sounds familiar it now. Is. It's starting to ring. Okay. Yeah, Neil Stevenson is the author. Neil Stevenson, okay. And, um, yeah, he's written a bunch of books. The Diamond Age is one of, in a series, um, I, the, the Cryptonomicon, I think, is another book he wrote. But, but he has this, I, is this notion of government, and um, what, they're, what they're called is files, P-H-Y-L-E-S. Essentially, they're, essentially okay. they're tribes, and, and people belong to them. And they have um, territorial enclaves, but they also, you can belong to that file no matter where you live. So it's a voluntary, it's essentially a voluntary government. And wherever you live, you are governed by that file. And that file then has interstate or interfile relations with all the other files to make sure that crimes that are committed across boundaries, they're not geographical boundaries, they're just client boundaries are, remi uh -huh. are um, mediated properly. Um, that, sounds exactly like the, that sounds exactly like the Icelandic system. Yeah, the yeah. it's essentially the same thing. Right, once you take away the idea that someone owns a particular, or not a, see the weird thing is, is they say they own the territory, but what they really mean is they own every person in the territory. Right. Essentially, I own, you know, they right. own everyone. And, and in, a, in, a fact, they, in effect, they really do own the territory itself also, because they have the, the, uh, the ability to tax it. They, they reserve the right to tax it. So if, they, if, if you fail to pay your taxes on your property and the government can then take it from you, then it, it, it's really not the case that you owned it in the first place. So it, I, I argue oh, yeah, against sure. the, uh, the, the geoists, and I, get, I, I arrive at a, a point with them where I stop because they want me to admit that uh, what they call, what they don't call government but serves the, all the functions of a government and owns and uh, regulates, uh, receives payment for the land, they don't want to call that a government. Sometimes they call it the people, um, but then they can't all the time because you have run into some semantic conflicts because it's not actually the people. And they insist that I adopt their terminology and, and look at the things the way they look at them. And I guess I'm just not willing to do that. So I stop there, and, and I, I, I want them to, to be more honest about what they're calling government and what they're calling the people and the distinction between those things. Um, and they refuse, so we just can't go any further. But that that just that that right, idea about them owning. I, I was going to say that that's typical also of the anarcho communists as well, in that they have this idea that there's this entity that's going to um, enforce rules or whatever, but it's not the government. And right. That's ridiculous. Right. It's, it's yeah. There's, there's either individual people or there's some collective force that is called the government that uses violence against other people. And I think right. the geoists fall into that trap. Yeah. It is the government. I mean, it is a government, whether, whether they want to admit it or not. But that idea of the, this government or, or chieftaincy or whatever it turns out to be, um, yeah, why are we even being funny? It's a government. All these things are government. Um, if it doesn't own land, um, it is quite different if if it if it doesn't own land right. and it doesn't coerce membership, then it's very different from anything we've ever known uh, as a government. Right. It, it may not be called a government, but a system of government governance or a um, governance entity or something like that. But it's it's certainly not a coercive monopoly territorial government, as is mm -hmm. typically historically recognized as government or state. And it can, the, the functions can be provided. I think that's, oh, yeah. that's the essential thing we need to, um, it, you know. However you go about it, I think it, it, it's clear to me anyway that it, it can be done without a coercive monopoly on, um, on force. 
Well, well, actually, I should back up and it or, or qualify what I'm saying. There are certain things that certainly can be provided on the market, like defense could be, um, protection services could be, dispute resolution could be, criminal apprehension and remediation or whatever you want to call it could be. Um, and I think, I think a lot of statists might even agree with that. Maybe, I'm not 100% sure. But there comes a point where then they say, okay, well, what about welfare? That's the thing that I always mm -hmm. run up against the wall on. Um, well, welfare is essentially taking from other people purposely to give to other. I mean, it's literally stealing to give to other people. And that's not going to be a voluntary arrangement. No. As far as I can see, unless, unless of course, you, know, you join your voluntary government and part of the stipulation is, okay, you join and you got to give X percent because we have old people in our government that we need to take care of. And you say, okay, I'm going to join up, and yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to support these people, in which case it's not coercive. So it, it could be done also. Oh, yes, like something like a chieftaincy could provide that service sure. if it happened to work out. Yeah, as long as they could still exist, as long as they could still compete against the other chieftaincies for clients, Sure, they could do welfare. They like could be the part of the, the the insurance policy. Yeah, I like the term chieftaincy because it's much more. Um, I don't know. It's it's different than say like a um, when you think of insurance an insurance agency doing it. It, it seems much more sort of um, stainless steel. Less where corporate. The chieftaincy sounds more like wood, <laughs> like wood and smoke. Yeah, and yeah. much. More so it wouldn't smoke more feathers instead of, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And that's just what comes uh, pops to mind. I guess because that, I guess because that 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 Icelandic story is in my head recently. So that's probably why I'm saying that a lot. Yeah. Okay. So there's no doubt that these services can be provided, and the key is on a on a voluntary basis. Um. Yeah. So so what do you what do you think when people say to you? Well, where has this? Where is this working right now? Or where does this happen right now? Or give, give me an example of where this has oh. worked. Because that's the thing oh, that I, really I think, kills me. I think no. I think all kinds of about that question. It depends on how it's phrased. Sometimes, um, well, actually, I haven't had an honest person who's not just trying to uh, dig his heels in and and win an argument. Uh, phrase that. I haven't heard anybody not like that give that question. Usually that's what they do, and they phrase it in a way that is ad hoc and it's uh, uh, structured in a, in, in a way that it makes it impossible to answer. And, and I think of trying to answer it from their perspective. Like if I turn the same question around on them, I find that most of the time they wouldn't be able to answer it either. Nobody could. It's just impossible to answer. Like stuff like, uh, how will your um, system uh, 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 alleviate poverty. That's a question I had recently. Um, and that doesn't even mean anything, alleviate poverty. That's not even a, a coherent thought. Um, it's too ambiguous. But where is it right. working right now? Um, well, nowhere, of course. Uh, but it, you, that doesn't mean anything. Nothing follows from that. It doesn't mean that it's not possible. It doesn't mean that it's not better than what we have. It, it just means that it's the case right now that either, well, there, there's, a, there's several things that are the case right now. First, most people believe that they do need a government, um, a, 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 an agency right. with a monopoly on the initiation of force um, to, in order to live. They're convinced by that. And then there are those who um, are in government, those who would um, rule other people, and well, they're, they're, they, that's what they want to do, and since most people believe that they must, well, you have a recipe for having governments everywhere. But it doesn't follow from that that, that this is a better way to do things than the, the more proper way of everyone um, admitting to the fact that, that this system is wicked and, and shouldn't be tolerated. And since there are historical examples of, of since there are historical examples of um, voluntary uh, governments or 
cheap, whatever you want to call them. Um, it, it, well, that, I mean, that shows right away that it's possible, and we can imagine ways in which it could work uh, differently, that, that, it, that it, it could be modernized, or that um, if there's something about the, the other systems, the older systems that you don't like, um, the, it, it could be tweaked, changed, you could, you could refuse to allow certain things. Like the, the, the one problem with the um, uh, early American system systems is that they set up laws and what they ended up doing was they made clubs to protect their um their cattle rights and grazing rights and all that but they were they were basically little right. little states so that, that's really all they did is made states they didn't make anything that was uh, detached from the land so once you attach it to the land you have a government it just needs to grow um hmm. as far as that I mean, those are the those are some of the answers I can think of to that, and it's. It, it, I think the important thing to remember is it that question is not that question doesn't lead to anything uh, uh, that that can be known. It doesn't show. It doesn't help. Well, it helps their argument in a in a rhetorical way, in a in a way that if they're trying to propagandize people to believe that governments are necessary, yeah, it helps do that. But um, there's there's no intellectual um, grounding underneath it, you can just kick it right off. Right, it I can see. Yeah, it. I can see that. They're just it, they're essentially throwing it up as a roadblock, saying, "All right, prove to me that it works somewhere, and then we'll talk further." That, and that's it's essentially mm -hmm. what they're saying. Right. They they've come up with a with an arbitrary um, hoop for you and uh, hoop for you to jump through, I guess, an arbitrary uh, ticket that you must buy in order to. Pr pr uh, continue the conversation and they just made it up on the spot yes that maybe not on the spot yes, but it is sense. ad hoc it's obviously ad hoc yeah but that question does always just nail me right I, I whenever I see that I'm just like oh god how am I going to answer this legitimately um, and that's just you know my own that's my own self that's the way I react to that so it's, it's not an indication of yeah. anything about anarchism it's just my own ability to argue where does yeah, it work yeah. right now? Well, I, another question that you could ask uh, where it works right now is um, a, a colony on, on a planet that doesn't have oxygen in its atmosphere. That can't work because it now. There's got to be easier ones than that, more plausible, closer to, 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 to us time-wise and technology-wise to think of to... to show parallel to that question to show how that question is vacuous um i, I guess the counter question would be well where does statism work <laughs> yeah it's yeah essentially we'll get in, in war and right so make them define work yeah but, but honestly we were um when i was talking with uh the group um xl and socia and real american thinker we're we're talking yeah. about some stuff and one of the things that we we brought up was you know you have you have minarchism and you have anarchism and then and then a thousand miles away you have the current liberal demo democracy right so one of one of the issues that I'm sort of struggling with myself is you know how how hard do you push the idea of anarchism or do you just push the idea of Minarchism, because people way get way way more on board with that. And that's I don't know. Literally, that's a good if question. We, yeah, I don't know because if we got to a point where there was um, a military, a police force, and a judicial system, I I don't know. I think I would be happy, honestly. So sometimes I wonder whether I'm cutting off my nose to spite my face to say no. You know, every aggression against another person is wrong, and there can be no state whatsoever. And then people just shut their ears down. I guess what I've been doing lately is, because um, I'm not shut off to arguing in favor of small government, but I don't. Um, I still won't make myself turn myself into a minarchist because I, I I'm convinced that. 
um, government is necessarily evil. Any, you know, any, if it if it coerces cooperation, then it's evil. Um, uh, as far as whether it's better to argue in favor of a small government or to argue in favor of of government being evil, I I, I guess we need to do both. Because it is important that people uh, come to terms with the fact that that uh, governments, as as they are now, are just evil. Nobody seems to recognize it. They all, they, and it's hard for me not to sit there and just um, ridicule their their positions because they all believe all these things that are just obviously false. They all live in what I see as fantasy land, where um, it is okay to uh, force people to do things. It is okay in some situations to forcibly take from people, um, and and we've all uh, we've all agreed to this imaginary contract. Oh, and in addition to that, we are beholden to an an entity that is uh, um, really turns out to be just a, an abstraction that doesn't exist in any real sense. So there's all kinds of problems with with most people's view of the world that that I see that I want to just um, fix. I want them to be honest at first. Yeah, I I can see that. And, and it seems to me that there's not a conflict between arguing sometimes in favor of of uh, no government at all and sometimes in favor of of small government. Uh, because since what I want is no government at all, and small government is closer to no government at all, um, I'm still pushing in that direction. Um, right. Where right. I guess it's like if if there was a a a, a tribe that was slaughtering ten thousand people a day. And I come along and say, "Whoa, you guys are killing ten thousand people a day!" And they say, "What the hell? You this is you, shut up. Get, get with the times, man. This is what we do." Um, it, and I say, "Don't don't you know killing is wrong?" And we go through this whole thing where um, I have to convince them that killing is wrong, and then uh, they start to maybe sort of come around to the idea. Okay, well maybe that's that's true. That's starting to make a little sense. Um, okay, well yeah, maybe we'll just kill a thousand people a day. Um, I wouldn't say, oh, forget it, just keep killing, killing the 10,000. I'd say, well, that's better. You still kill people, but um, that's right. my analogy. That's, that's a really good sense. analogy. Right, that's a, that's a really good analogy because, you know, obviously the ultimate goal is to say, well, we shouldn't be killing anybody, right? <laughs> but if you could right. at least convince them, they would, ex well, I guess the thing is, if they don't accept at all the idea that you, they shouldn't be killing anybody, but they would conceivably accept your argument as to why they should kill only one-tenth of people they kill, then you'd be doing better to argue for the, the latter than the former. If that's the case, because, yeah. Yeah, if, if that's the case. So it's sort of, I think it's, like you said, it's sort of a two-pronged attack. You want to always keep the goal in mind, but any step in the right direction is probably a good thing. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. It's um, it's it's funny because I you know I think about this stuff a lot, and you know sometimes it seems so perfectly clear, and then sometimes it seems like well, how do you ever go about changing the world? Because there are people who you know they want to get they want to get free cell phones <laughs> from the federal government. Mm -hmm. No. And how yeah. do you go from that to no zero government, voluntary government only? And uh, it just I seems don't, like an insurmountable yeah. challenge sometimes. It is. It is. People have a tendency to um, instead of admitting that something they do is wrong, they want to convince others or themselves or however they're doing it. Thing isn't wrong in the beginning. It, it seems to be really difficult for, for people to say, "Yeah, that's wrong," and I do it. Um, so. Oh yeah. Once somebody's once somebody's they never doing want to do that. that's co cognitive dissonance. It's a tricky uh, task to try to get people to think about that sort of thing. I think one thing that, that can help is um, to uh, uh, dethrone 
uh, hypocrisy as the as the greatest sin. Uh, make hypocrisy uh, something that is uh, accepted. That that's a step in the right direction. Anyway, I don't know. Perhaps not. Because I'm I'm um, happy to call myself yeah, a hypocrite. What you mean by that? About, well, I'm happy sometimes to call myself a hypocrite. Um, I, I, I've, I guess I've always kind of been this way. If, if I do something, okay, I smoke cigarettes. Uh, smoking cigarettes is bad for you. And it's uh, it, doing things that are bad for you uh, is, is wrong. So smoking cigarettes is wrong. It's a, it's a moral failure. I'm it's not an sure ethical failure. I'm not, no. Okay, well. I don't think I'm making is. the argument. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, let's just pretend that the argument. Let's just pretend the argument flies, and it turns out that it is uh, an ethical failure. Um, I, I, the fact that I do it, I don't know. It doesn't like make me feel bad to to say it's wrong, and I do it. You know, I ought not do it. I don't see what the problem is. So I. I, I well, that's actually, that's, that's I what I do. Yeah, some I don't think that's, but I don't think that's the nature of hypocrisy. I think hypocrisy is more like, um, I'm going to smoke cigarettes, and I'm fine with that. But I don't want you to do it because I, I, think, I don't want you to do it. I I, I think that's I think, the nature of hypocrisy. Okay, I think you're right. I think you're right, and that I've I've, I've thought about that explicitly before. Yeah, I think the scenario you're describing is more of failure. Just you know, I, I recognize what I'm doing is wrong, and I, I don't, I, maybe I don't want to, but I can't stop myself, and I admit that I'm failing in what I think is moral, and I exhort you not to do it, and I don't think I should be doing it either. I think it's different. Okay. So it wouldn't be um, dethroning hypo hypocrisy then as, as a, a cardinal sin. It would be um, dethroning failure as something that is to be uh, deplored and avoided, and that might not be a good idea. So, so what is, the, you use cigarettes, but what is the actual real thing that you're thinking about? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, a, a government, uh, people um, wanting to rationalize the existence of government. Everybody uses government. People oh, seem yeah, to yeah. think, people, like, people uh, seem to you, think you a, drive on the road, so Right, right. They, right. they, they like, think that hey. since, well, that since they use the uh, the services, they would be uh, an, a hypocrite for for condemning the fact that the services are provided. Yeah, I, that's, that's and that may not. I mean, again, you, you while, that, Walter, while that while that you know Walter Bach, right? Yeah. You, have you ever heard of Walter Bach? Yeah. He he, he says. Um, he says, yeah, I use the roads, and my, my goal is to bankrupt the government sooner. <laughs> I, mean, he, 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 I guess that's like macho libertarian flash. He sort of says, uh, right. yeah, I do it. And uh, I, my goal is to, drive it into, is to drive it into the ground. So I go to the library. I take out books. I use the roads. I use the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so yeah. That might be one. Now, oh, oh. Well, you're a hypocrite thing. Okay. He must have got that from Rand, too. What's that? They must have got that from Rand. Um, that. Anne Rand, Ayn, however she says it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about her, honestly. Oh, good. <laughs> um, the, the, imagine somebody uh, went, uh, comes up to you with a gun and demands your wallet, and you give it to him, and he says thanks and gives you a comb, and then he goes about his way. Um, right. Do you condone the robbery if you start combing your hair as you walk away? Right. That's a good. That's a good analogy. I like that. Oh, good. Thank you. No, you don't. <laughs> no. <obviously. laughs> no. No. And 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 oh, and Spooner does a good job of that too. In in um, what's that one? It's the more popular uh, book of his. Um, Constitution of No Authority or something like that. Yes, that's the one. Uh, where he uh, yeah. defends the case that the uh, the voter is not consenting to the system, even for the time being, to the to the imaginary social contract, even while he votes, because it, 
I, I forget the, the exact case he makes to, to support that claim, but um, if you think about it, it's if um, uh, it were not the government that proposed this whole voting system and there was a, a some, some other little kind of system that forced people to participate like that and then gave them the option to vote, and then um, that system got brought in front of a judge and the, the 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 people who organized the whole thing and coerced the people to to participate in the system and gave them the option to influence it a little bit by voting. Um, if they tried to say, well, they voted, therefore they consented, I don't think any judge anywhere would would let that fly. Yeah, right, because it's essentially under coercion. Are you are you do you um have you ever heard of a guy named Larkin Rose? Um, no, I don't think so. L a r k i n um, r o s l a r k e n Larkin k e n okay. Rose, um, but he he put out a really interesting video fairly recently about a um, where he like he, it's an analogy cartoony video and it's all about a, a plantation where the slave master says that people can they can vote for. Um, who they want to boss them around, and it's just, and it just goes on oh, from yeah. there. It's it's really interesting. Y you know the one I'm uh, talking about. It, it, does he ask the question? Um, I don't know, but does he ask the question? Um, at, at what point did this uh, relationship fail to be uh, slavery? And he builds to something um, similar to the system where it's it's just the same thing you have now with democracy. Right, and then still ask the question: of, hey, At what point did this stop being slavery? Yeah, um, I've read that too. It's um, that may be like uh, I can't remember who it is. Something, someone like uh, someone more modern. I can't okay. remember. Anyway, but yeah, it's essentially the same well, thing. It's you, they keep making advances in choice, but ultimately you don't have a choice. Right. Yeah, I think I have uh, something by him here. It's a, is it called a, the Jones Plantation? And there's a, is there a YouTube channel called Lar Larkin Rose that belongs to the guy or is it about him? Yeah, the Jones Plantation. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You should check cool. that out. That's good. It. Okay. He, um, this, that, oh. that guy, Larkin Rose, actually went to, he went to jail for many years for um, not paying taxes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Purposely, purposely do saying, it. I am not paying. Yeah. Yeah, like Peter Schiff's dad and others. Yep. Yep. You know, the weird thing is the, the argument they make, uh, it, it, they're right. There, there are uh, legal problems with, with the, uh, the income tax. But it just, I guess, goes to show that um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter right. if you're right. I mean, they they have the gun. No, it doesn't matter. They will it's, lock you up. You're basically saying, "Hey, you wrote your rules wrong. You, I found an error in your rules." And they're like, you, "You know what? I don't care about my rules. We're just taking your money anyway." Right. Right. That's essentially what they do. What 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 about the free rider problem? That's often raised as an objection to uh, the the systems that could be provided um, without government the pr services that government now provides that could be provided without them. What if, what about people who don't want to pay into it? It, it, it comes up with things, I guess, mostly with things like defense and, um, yeah, I guess security. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there are, I've, I've read some essays that essentially say there, there is no free rider problem um, because people attribute externalities um, wrong but yeah it, you know it is a good it is a good question one, one of the things one of my weaknesses I have to admit is that um, I'm, I'm I think I'm way stronger in the sort of political ethical world than in the economic world um, like there's a guy on the board I think his name is Reaver or River yeah yeah I mean the guy just talk, he just talks gobbledygook and you know yeah. I, I have a I have a basic understanding of, of economics 
But when you uh-huh. talk to a guy like that, like you're just totally out of your depth. Or I am, I should say. And, well, and I, I really I, try to I avoid too because I, I don't have I, I have a pretty uh, deep understanding of Austrian economics, but I've never studied any other uh, school of thought. So I I couldn't um, engage him on on his level there. But he doesn't seem to like with me. I don't know if he does this to everybody else, but with me, he doesn't seem to want to engage. He just starts off saying um, he he quotes some principle that he says is that he says debunks some idea or um, refutes some idea, and he doesn't he refuses to explain how. He doesn't give any sources. I have to Google everything myself to find out what he's talking about, and um, he's—I he, I have a feeling he's—he's he's full of it. I have a feeling he's kind of just yeah. trying to make himself appear I, I also, to be intelligent and knowledgeable when he's really not as intelligent, intelligent or knowledgeable as he wants to look. Yeah, I, I think you're right, but the the problem is it takes a lot of work to go and debunk or re- rebut what he says mm-hmm. and I, yeah. honestly I don't have the time for that yeah Especially it, may, when it's not it doesn't matter what he says because the whole ethical aspect of it is you know you don't have a right to do that so whether your outcome is X or Y it doesn't make a difference that's the way I look at it right um, plus there's other people who can deal with him and people like him um, so it's not like everybody has to be a specialist on the board. in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Who's who's good on the board about that? Uh, economics. Um, yeah. I. Hmm. The first one that comes to mind is um, a- anecdote. Um, yeah. Well, I think she agrees with him more than than not. Oh really? I okay. I don't know. Um, I don't know. He doesn't seem to, he doesn't seem to have a, a favorite uh, school of thought, uh, but he does seem to be familiar with with uh, most of them. He does he, he has some knowledge okay. of most of them. He, he's not he doesn't have deep knowledge of any of them, but he has enough knowledge of most of them to to uh, deal with anybody on that forum anyway. Um, and then when you get right. deeper, when you get into into uh, Dealing with people who are who are more educated than that, um, well, I guess then you just leave that up to the the, the PhDs, the Walter Blocks, and the and the. Um, I really like what's his name. Um, that the I think he's German. Um, uh, not Guido. Holt, oh, Hans, but, uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe. Oh, Hoppe, Guido yeah. Hosman. Hoppe, yeah. Hoppe. Yeah, I like Hosman guys, too, but Hoppe, Hoppe, Hoppe is amazing. Yes, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, Hoppe, is Hoppe is just amazing. And um, from, from most a, of what he lo- not a, I would just most of what he writes seems to be like a major contribution to 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 the field. He he's he, he's a uh, it's not important. He he's just a, a, an extreme heavyweight, I guess. I was going to say. Yeah, he seems, he seems to be a pretty original thinker, as far as I'm concerned. But I like um, I also like Tom Woods because he sort of makes things accessible to ordinary yes. schmucks like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what he, got uh, me into Austrian very well. With Tom Woods. Yeah, I I heard him describe the Austrian business cycle in some Mises lecture, and I just yeah you know, probably took about ten minutes for him to explain it, but it was just. I just said that's it. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even though he's a historian and not an economist, he's really good at at um, articulating the the business cycle and how interference manipulates things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's a good speaker. He's engaging. Um, I think he's likable. A lot of people seem to think he's arrogant, but I, he probably only comes really? off to oh, people I think with he's it. Hilarious. As, I, I, yeah, that's what I think. I think he only probably comes off as arrogant to people who already have a, a, a negative bias toward um, the, that theory, that that kind of thinking. Right. I mean, I've I've been driven. I I am I always I'm a podcast dude, so I listen to podcasts all the time in my car a lot of times, and I've subjected okay. my kids to Tom Woods 
and they're actually laughing along with with him. I mean, they think he's funny. <laughs>